Welcome to lesson 14, which roughly covers pages 86 to 88 of the Automate the Boring Stuff with Python textbook. In this lesson, we're going to cover a few different topics using for loops with lists, multiple assignment, and the augmented assignment operators. In lesson 7, you learned about using for loops to execute a block of code a certain number of times. So if you had something like for i in range 4, and the block of code was just print i, this would output 0, 1, 2, 3. But technically, a for loop repeats the code block once for each value in a list or list-like value. Let's take a closer look at this range function. You can see range 4 returns a value that's of the data type called a range object. And range objects are a list-like values. Python considers this range object to be similar to the list 0, 1, 2, 3. In fact, you could write a for loop like this, 0, 1, 2, 3, and this would do the exact same thing as the previous list. So what Python is doing is it takes this list value and says, okay, I'll assign the first item to the variable i and then run the block of code. And then after that's done, I'll assign the second item in the list to the variable i and then run that block of code again, and it'll just keep doing this for all of these. I use the term list-like to refer to data types that are technically named sequences in Python, but you don't need to know the technical definitions of these terms. Now if you want to get the actual list value from a range object value, then you can just pass that to the list function. It'll return an actual list for you. This can also be really handy if you need to get a collection of integers in a list. So instead of just typing out, say, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, and so on, up to you know something really huge like 100, you could just pass this range object and say, start at 0, go up to, but not including 100, and then step twice so that it counts up by 2 instead of 1. And so here's a nice list value. We can assign that to a variable just like any other value. One common Python technique is to use range and then pass it the return value of len and then pass it and pass that some list value and then use that inside of a for loop. I'll show you what I mean with some sample code. Say that we had a variable supplies which contained a list of strings describing uh, typical office equipment that we had. So we can add the string pens, staplers, flamethrowers, and binders. Typical office stuff. We're going to have a for loop that instead of just going through range of something, we could pass this range function the length of supplies. And now we can use i as an index for the supplies list inside this block of code. So we could have something like print uh, index whatever i is. i is an integer, so we need to convert it to a string before we can concatenate it to these other strings. And supplies is supplies i. And this prints out index 0 in supplies is pens, index 1 in supplies is staplers. So using this range, len, and then the list format inside of a for loop is kind of handy because then we can use this uh, for loop variable i to refer to both the index, if we ever need the integer index while we go through the loop, and then we can also just have that list value with the index i to get the value inside the, inside the list. So if you ever need to run loop code over a list where you need both the value inside of it and also the integer index, you can just use this range len and then whatever list variable format. And one good thing about this is that the list can be of any size whatsoever and this same code will work. So even if I had supplies equals 
pens and pens and pens and pens and pens, lots of pens. You know, this is a pretty huge list that we have right here. I can use this exact same code. I'll just copy and paste it. And it will still work. So this range length supplies works no matter what the size of the supplies list is. Python also has a multiple assignment trick, and it's a nice little shortcut. So say we had a list in the variable cat that of strings that just describe a cat, fat, orange, loud. And say we wanted to put all of these items inside of separate variables. So we have a size variable, uh, we'd have to set it to cat zero, maybe a color variable for cat one. We would have to have three separate lines of code for this, uh, and that could get kind of hairy once we have very, very long lists. But Python has a multiple assignment trick where you could just have multiple variables on the left side of the assignment operator separated by commas, and then just have a list value, and this will automatically do the same thing as this, except in one line of code. So it just says, okay, I'll take the first item in this list cat and assign it to the first variable on the left side of the op assignment operator. And then the second value inside that list will be assigned to the second variable and so on. Another thing with the multiple assignment trick is that you could have multiple variables on the left side, but also have multiple values on the right side. Just separate those with commas as well. So if I had skinny, black, quiet to describe my cat, I could assign multiple variables to multiple values in one line of code. This is often used to do swap operations with variables. So we have a variable a, which contains this string aaa, and a variable b, which contains the value bbb. Say I wanted to put this string inside of this variable, and meanwhile take this string and put it inside this variable, I could do that with the multiple assignment trick by just saying a comma b equals b comma a, and all of a sudden Python will automatically do that swap for us. One more shortcut that Python has is augmented assignment operators. So when you're assigning a value to a variable, you'll frequently use the variable itself. Say if you wanted to increment the value inside of, uh, inside of a variable, spam is 42 and we want to increase that by one, we would have to have spam equals spam plus one. And this is something that you do fairly commonly in programming. So Python and other languages have something called augmented assignment operators, where it's just a little shortcut so that you don't have to retype the variable name. You can just have spam plus equals one. And that means take the variable spam and then just add one to it. So you can see spam was 42, I incremented it here, but this code does the exact same thing, it increments it again. And there are augmented assignment operators for plus, minus, uh, multiplication, division, and the modulus operators. You can see them here in table 4-1 of the automate textbook. So to recap, for loops technically iterate over the values in a list. Uh, the range function returns a list-like value, and if you need the actual list of that, you can pass that range object to the list function. Variables can swap their values using multiple assignment, and the augmented assignment operators, like plus equals, are used as shortcuts just to change the value of a variable based on its current value.